Game developers can be an unusual bunch. Some dress up as medieval kings and live in castles. Some have terrifying knife collections. And if I had a dollar for every game developer who put on a fake head to talk to the press, I'd have two dollars. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. <laughs> Fast becoming a popular hobby among game developers, however, is the exciting field of trolling their own players through in-game pranks, passive-aggressive commentary, or just downright lying about secrets in their games for the lols. Here are seven times video game developers trolled their own players. Enjoy! They challenged the dragons. Gwyn's mighty gods peeled apart their stone scales. Witches weaved great firestorms. From Software, the developers of the beloved Dark Souls series, as well as Bloodborne, Sekiro, and Elden Ring, love being mysterious almost as much as they love killing you, the player. Okay, not quite as much. But FromSoft is a developer known for hiding secrets in their games, such as illusory walls that vanish when you hit them, or the secret sword you get by shooting a dragon's tail like 100 times. Good luck figuring that one out on your own. With that in mind, when From Software president and one of the key minds behind the Soul series, Hidetaka Miyazaki, was asked in an interview with Famitsu Magazine what one of the game's free starting items he would choose when playing Dark Souls, he replied he would take either nothing or the pendant, a necklace that the game tells you does nothing. Naturally, Dark Souls fans took this to mean that the pendant must have some hidden, secret meaning. And so, they then proceeded to spend the next 13 months hitting every object in the game, playing through multiple times, gesturing in front of random buildings, and writing incredibly long forum threads and wiki pages detailing their quest to uncover the true use for the pendant. Well, I can tell you for sure that dying 1000 times doesn't trigger it. That's my contribution. Seeing all this effort everyone was going to, Miyazaki said in another interview, I am very sorry I cannot tell you here how you use the item. I still want people to try investigating the meaning of the item. Please find it out on your own. Laughs! Bolstered by the news that the pendant secrets were out there just waiting to be discovered, the community redoubled their efforts, right up until a year after that interview, where Miyazaki was talking to IGN and casually mentioned that he'd been trolling people all along and the pendant actually did nothing. When it comes to the pendant, he said, I actually had a little bit of an intention to play a prank. Of course, that's what he would say if the pendant did do something to throw people off the scent. He wants the pendant secrets all for himself. Hmm, I better load up Dark Souls and die 1000 more times, just to be sure. Before he was El Presidente. Me papa love to fish. We would go out on a boat, just like this. And we would catch the fish, and then release them. He would say, it's not always about your stomach, mijo. It's about the challenge. In Far Cry 6, you play as guerrilla fighter Danny Rojas, who is fighting to topple the tyrannical dictator Anton Castillo, who rules the fictional Caribbean island of Yara with an iron fist and also sometimes regular crocodiles. Yara is a massive open world and there are tons of missions, side missions and other quests for you to busy yourself with, so much so that it might seem overwhelming at first. Early Far Cry 6 adopters who slacked off from the game, however, whether it was because they had other stuff going on or were just taking their time to get into it, found themselves on the receiving end of a trolling from the developer Ubisoft, one that was impossible to ignore as it was delivered directly into their email inbox. Written as a missive from the game's antagonist Castillo, the email reads, Hola Rojas, I wanted to thank you for giving me free reign in Yara. Take it easy and know that Yara is in capable hands. The email goes on to ask, surely you can do better than this, and then lists a bunch of the email recipient's stats such as time played and total kills. When asked about the emails, a Ubisoft spokesperson said they were intended to be a gentle nudge to try and get players back into playing the game, which might be believable if the email weren't the game's main villain dunking on you and your terrible Far Cry 6 stats. <sighs> then. Enjoy the show. How did this guy even get my email address? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 
I knew I should have read that Ubisoft privacy policy more closely. Who are you? What do you want? You were careless. You left a trail. Now he's on to you. What are you talking about? Who's on to me? The hunter demon. <gasps> he's here. Despite starting life as a rejected Resident Evil 4 prototype, the Devil May Cry series has risen to become one of Capcom's most popular franchises, thanks in no small part to its dreamboat hero, Dante. Looks like this is gonna be one hell of a party! All aboard the HMS Dreamboat, now weighing anchor. Over the course of the series, new characters and gameplay mechanics have been introduced, but Dante's look remained broadly the same. Leather trousers, red jacket, no shirt, obviously, and gloriously textured white hair, like if Geralt went to a barber and asked for the Rachel. That was until late 2010, when the series reboot, known as DMC Devil May Cry, was revealed along with a new-look Dante, who dressed like someone on their way home from their first music festival, and whose hair was, unforgivably, short and dark. My name is Dante. The HMS Dreamboat has hit an iceberg. You can imagine the online reaction from die-hard Dante fans in certain quarters. Spoiler, they weren't happy. Whoa. Someone doesn't want me here. DMC developer Ninja Theory knew that a sizable chunk of the Devil May Cry fandom wasn't happy about Dante's new look and decided to address it in the most diplomatic way possible, by massively trolling those discontented fans in one of the game's early cutscenes. At the very start of the game, Dante gets into a fight with a hunter demon, and as a result of the ensuing carnage, various debris winds up flying around the place, including a white wig which lands on Dante's head. Oh, this is what you like Dante to look like, is it? asks this cutscene. Too bad, Dante will never look like this again. Not in a million years. Until later on in the game, when Dante's hair turns white anyway, due to his use of his devil trigger power. So kind of a double troll? I don't know who I am anymore. See, this is why Ninja Theory are the masters. Hot off the massive success of the original Metal Gear Solid, and with fans clamouring for more adventures of gaming's gruffest headband wearer, Solid Snake, the demo for Metal Gear Solid 2 hits all the right notes. <laughs> The demo included a good chunk of the game's tanker chapter, which, if you've played Metal Gear Solid 2, you'll remember as the chapter in which you play as Solid Snake. It's a lot like Metal Gear Solid 1, only a lot better looking and cooler. This is great, players at the time thought to themselves. I can't wait to play a whole new game of this as my favourite game character, Solid Snake. And somewhere, the game's director laughed at himself as everyone had fallen for the latest trick from Hideo Kojima, Master Troll. Yes, as you'll also remember if you played Metal Gear Solid 2, after the tanker chapter, you're suddenly in control of Raiden, and remain so for the entirety of the game. The name of their leader is Solid Snake. The hero of Shadow Moses? So that's why you changed my code name. This surprising bait and switch, with new protagonist Raiden taking over for the familiar and beloved Solid Snake, went down like a lead balloon. So much so that the series would later lean into its player's rocky relationship with Raiden by openly mocking him in Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. <coughs> then had all of him from the jaw down thrown away and replaced with robot parts in Metal Gear Solid 4. Snake, it's my turn to protect you. Metal Gear Solid 2 still turned out well, but anyone expecting another Solid Snake game would have been sorely disappointed, especially as their hopes had been needlessly raised by this absolute troll move of a demo. Not to mention the even trollier pre-release trailers in which fans were shown Snake doing stuff like the boss fight with railgun aficionado Fortune, that would actually, in the game itself, take place between Fortune and new kid Raiden. Still, they learned their lesson and went back to using all Snake variants as the protagonists in the main series, while Metal Gear Rising Revengeance gave us a more serious, nuanced take on the character of Raiden. Adios, amigos. Oh, wait, never mind. Yeah. 
quests where you have to collect hundreds of hidden items are nothing new in video games, but there's definitely a right way to do them. The right way is to make the collecting part fun and interesting, taking you to parts of the game's world that you wouldn't usually see, and rewarding you with a cool item or some unique story after you complete your quest. Conversely, the wrong way is to troll you into collecting 900 tiny stinky seeds and then reward you with a literal piece of sh**. That's the route that storied video game geniuses Nintendo went down for the Korok Seed side quest in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Initially, collecting Korok Seeds has a purpose. They can be traded for increased inventory space when bought to Hestu, a giant dancing turnip man. You only need to collect 441 Korok Seeds to max out Link's inventory, but there are a staggering 900 in the game. Still, this is a Legend of Zelda game bearing the Nintendo seal of quality, probably. Whatever is waiting for you once you collect all 900 seeds must be pretty good, you may have thought, kicking off dozens of hours of scouring the Hyrule landscape for these tiny, annoying twig people and their stupid seeds. Finally complete this Herculean task and you return to Hestu for your reward, confident in the knowledge that Nintendo will recognise your achievements and respect you for your hard work and dedication to their game, right up until the point where Hestu gives you a golden piece of his own sh**. It doesn't do anything, but the in-game description confirms it smells pretty bad. Thanks Nintendo! In an interview with game site IGN, Breath of the Wild's director explained this reeking reward was included because they thought it would be funny, confirming that the Korok seeds you had been collecting all along were also Korok poop. Wow, you got us, Nintendo. Well, there's no way I'm falling for this thing about getting a motorbike in the DLC. No, that one is real. You're kidding. What is going on over there at Nintendo? Have you met our new hire? Just started today. I haven't. Bonjour. What project? Sample 17, the Kenway line. Hey them, Connor. Edward, the pirate. Ah, ar, yar, maybe. <laughs> Very exciting. Welcome aboard. You may remember Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag as being the one that would occasionally yank you bodily out of your thrilling high seas pirate adventure to make you work a desk job at Ubisoft. Well, your numbers look good. Now let's make sure we can break your brain, all right? Sorry, Abstergo Entertainment, but it's basically the same thing as you'll discover when you log into your email and find out that Abstergo is developing video games based on their Animus-enabled research into the Assassin Order. Presumably video games that don't also involve interminable sequences where you wander around an office. So better then. As you can imagine, a major pastime of the Assassin's Creed community is trying to figure out where the series is going to go for its next instalment, and at this point in the series, with Renaissance Italy, the American Revolution, and the Golden Age of Piracy all covered off, people were eager for clues as to what would come next. And so, to utterly troll these faithful fans, Ubisoft included an email you can discover in the game in which Abstergo management talk about the setting for their next interactive history experience that they can create from Desmond's genetic memory. The trolling part comes in when you realise that there are absolutely loads of them, and it barely narrows it down at all. The potential settings include Egypt, the Ashikaga Shogunate in Japan, the French Revolution, the Napoleonic Wars, Taiwan, and the American Pacific Coast in the Summer of Love in the 1960s. However, Feudal Japan was a particularly longed-for setting for die-hard fans of the series, so it was with some degree of chagrin that fans eventually discovered that the next main game in the series, Assassin's Creed Unity, would be set in the French Revolution. Find you acting on your best behavior. But now we're working our way through this list, they may have thought. So, Feudal Japan is coming soon, right? Wrong, because the next Assassin's Creed game, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, was set in Victorian London, which wasn't on the list. Okay, to be fair, the email thread does continue with more Abstergo employees adding their own suggestions, with one obvious jerk saying they should ditch the boring history and go with stuff that sells, like Jack the Ripper, which later became real as Assassin's Creed Syndicate DLC. It's the Ripper. He's done it again. Kind of mixed messaging if I'm honest, Ubisoft. The Witcher games are different things to different people. To some, they're epic, sprawling fantasy quests in which you fight gruesome monsters. Oh. 
to others, they're a framework for you to travel to different taverns and play Gwent against people. There is a large proportion of players, however, for whom the Witcher games are a sort of fantasy dating sim, in which your main aim is to try and get off with as many sorceresses as possible. I sure hope the other guests don't get drunk as quickly as I did. Witcher developer CD Projekt Red is clearly aware of the third group and as such decided to let them know what they thought of them by trolling them senseless in The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. In The Witcher 3, Geralt's main romantic interests are beautiful sorceress Triss Merigold. I'm just glad to see you safe and sound and... Reconciled? And beautiful sorceress Yennefer of Vengerberg. Excuses, excuses. You've not changed a bit. He definitely has a type. Anyway, while some flirting with both is tolerated, even encouraged, players will need to choose who their main squeeze is going to be, which can be a hard decision until you find out that pursuing Yennefer means doing it on a unicorn. My heart couldn't take it. So many memories. For players who want to have their cake and eat it too, however, you can attempt to romance both women equally. And for a while, it seems like the game is going to let you. You smell wonderful. Geralt, we're at a funeral. You smell wonderful at this funeral. Carry on down this path and later in the game, after helping Triss and Yennefer in Novigrad, both women will approach Geralt and try to seduce him together. So, we've prepared something special. But what might initially seem like a dream come true for sorceress fanciers turns out to be a massive troll on the part of the developers, because Triss and Yennefer chain Geralt to the bed and then... <sighs> What about me? Don't I get any? You just got exactly what you deserve. So they both leave, leaving Geralt tied up in his boxer shorts where he has to be rescued by Dandelion, who gives you a lecture about treating women with respect. Glad to give you some advice if you want. Think I'll pass. And from this point onwards, both Triss and Yennefer will refuse to have anything to do with Geralt romantically. You and Triss have a good time. Splendid. We finally got the chance to talk. But those were all the sorceresses! Who am I supposed to go out with now? A witch? A wizardess? A lady magician? This is the worst. Ah, well, well. Ladies did quite a number on you. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video about times that game developers trolled their own players. Have you ever been trolled by a video game developer? Is Hideo Kojima outside your house right now with an air horn while you're trying to sleep? does that to me, and let me tell you, it gets on, gets on your nerves after a while. Anyway, t let us know about it in the comments, and if you want to watch more videos from us, uh, you can click on this, it's a video from Outside Xbox, down here is a video from Outside Extra, and there is one pixel on this screen that takes you to a secret video. You have to click all the pixels to find it. It is real though, I'm not trolling, so see if you can find it. Bye!